What's going okay, on, man? I'll be in Thailand virtually. <laughs> Thanks for coming on here. Um, me and Leonard are huge fans of yours. As you know, we've been talking for a while, so this is exciting for us. So we really appreciate it. Okay, awesome. I'm huge fans of your guys as well. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> Do you really take some time out and ever watch some of the things that uh, the recent things in the Misfit universe world? You know, actually, I've been following the Misfit Instagram more than anything. I haven't been watching as many YouTube videos lately. But yeah. um, one thing I don't understand is how, how, who and how do you guys put so much content out sometimes? You know, and like, and you make things go viral. It's like you make them go viral. Uh, and then people, I don't know if it's you guys making all the sort of viral stuff and the spinoff stuff or it's other people making it also. That's mostly other people. Yeah. Okay. Well, that explains how um, that's that's the magic. Is it you put something out there and then other people improve it, improve it, improve it. It just gets weirder and weirder and funnier and funnier. Yeah, my it's whole big. concept as far as editing things down and whatever is Lenny has such a a strong cult following. These people want to see him do absolutely. They'll watch him do anything. So I just want to get as much footage up of Lenny as possible. So I don't cut it out, cut it down much. But there's a couple known accounts who um, create their own material with our stuff and we don't mind. Oh, okay. Well, I, hey, I would love to know more about the behind the scenes, uh, the arrest thing. Cause that's what I saw the most of. Yeah. I can go into that in a little detail. I was, I'm not absolved, which is something I've been doing. I hate to say every Friday night, cause I am training for a fight with Mr. G. I don't know if you know that. And, uh, I saw that too. I didn't know if that's real. I, so, so sometimes I'm not sure if it, if you guys if if some of it's real or if some of it's you know fake. Yeah, if I say it, it, it has to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Uh, but as far as that goes, I was in the wrong neighborhood. I wasn't thinking. I had something in my car that I really forgot I put there, and with my lack of experience being arrested. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I said the wrong thing to the police officer. And luckily, I have an associate that obtained a very good criminal defense attorney for me. And, you know, I thank him from the bottom of my heart, but he's going to do what he can for me. And I just don't want that on my record. You know, I think I was honest with the officers. I cooperated, certainly. I mean, I wasn't resisting arrest or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I took it like a man and I learned a lesson from it. And I haven't been doing that specific thing again, which was Molly. Uh, I'm kind of ashamed of it, but I enjoy doing that with a with a GHB on a Friday night. What can I say? <laughs> You know, I, you, you said, uh, you said, I learned a lesson from it. You know, I yeah. think what would be interesting is like a list of lessons that Lenny learned, like the top 10 lessons <laughs> that Lenny, <laughs> that Lenny learned of this lifestyle. The first one is don't have anything in your vehicle. Mm. The second is. Yeah. You don't have a right to privacy in your vehicle very much. I mean, there's so too many ways they can get around it sort of. Yeah. But he's saying that. When I spoke to the attorney, there's so many different things he can do. If I would have just said, no, you don't you give me the right to search my car, you know. And if I said, if he said, what's in the baggies, I said, I said nothing, which I should have said, well, I don't know. Well, when you're high, you, you, you don't assess risk very well. This is why, this is the main risk, like why people on drugs can easily get caught and confess and, and get searched, right? So... Yeah. And then particularly that's on Molly, that was a former drug used by the military as a truth serum. I was just trying to please everybody. Yeah, but that's what it And it goes back to why is that such a, why is that a felony possession when the people would do that instead of doing drinking alcohol or something worse? You'd have far less violence in clubs, that's for sure. You know, I, I'm surprised you get you got pulled over. I thought, you know, being here out of the U.S. and and watching the mainstream U.S. news, I thought only black people get pulled over. 
Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> then again, you use you use a lot of melanotan, so it's yeah. why you may. I think someone I think someone commented about that that you may have been you may be mistaken for a black person because you use so much tan injection. Right. Oh no, someone was giving you a hard time. They were saying that you that there's something wrong with you, a white person wanting to become a black person, which which is crazy to me because I think most of us white people love a good tan. You know, we, we don't want to be pale white like these Asians do. We want to have a nice tan and it also shows the muscle definition and we look, we have a healthy glow with it. You know? Yes, and it, it prevents sunburn, which I'm starting to get now with this Florida sunshine. And I believe I can absorb vitamin D better, but it's interesting you said that, Tony. I plan on taking melanotan and make myself so dark just for the fun of it, because it's reversible. And I like to see people's reactions and we're gonna start doing uh, videos where people are gonna think I am black and I'm gonna start speaking the other way and make for some very good videos. You said start speaking the other way, you're gonna have a black accent? <laughs> I'm start, yeah, talking about your conservative values and such like that and oh, see how yeah. they react to it. Yeah. Because what ge what genetic are you? What uh, ethnicity? I'm Polish and Croatian. Oh, I noticed the yeah. You have a Polish nose. I recognize. Yeah, what Hitler it. referred to as a scum of the earth. <laughs> no brains. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the one thing I think about Poland every time I hear it is I had some friends that traveled around the world and they said the the most open and horniest women they ever met were in Poland. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend, one of the girls, the first girls I fell in love with was was mm -hmm. Polish. And actually, she was the, one of the smartest, if not the smartest girlfriends I had. She was a chemical engineer. Yeah. No kidding. So much for the dumb Polak myth. Yeah, so I have I have good experience with, with Polish people, but, you know, limited experience. <laughs> so, Tony, what's been going on with mm -hmm. Rami, Enhanced Athletes? How's he doing? What supplements is he using? Yeah. Is, well, yeah. Is, so Ram, Ramey has to stay away from the hardcore underground, you know, that you and I live in. Of course, right. he's he's on the front and he's on the mainstream. And, and yeah, people like you and I are fans of of these top bodybuilders and of, of Ramey. Uh, but the bulk of the fans still of, of a top level bodybuilder like that are still like natty people or mainstream natty people, you know? Yeah. So that's that's the audience that's where the money is that's where the business is that's what makes olympia possible he's got to stay in that world uh he's going to be doing a, a tour uh, a little europe tour and a a little america tour uh making some training videos with a lot of the enhanced uh team so a lot okay. of collaboration stuff coming up uh, i think that's it's this summer, but I don't know exactly when because I'm not going to be there because I'm in Thailand and I don't want to leave. If I leave, I might not be able to get back in. The, the Thailand borders, because of the COVID thing, are uh, are pretty strict. They don't want people if, – if you come back in, you got to do a two-week quarantine, pain in the butt. I mean, people are still doing it. People are still traveling here, but that's I can't afford to give up two weeks of free. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's, that's insane. So Rami hasn't really been been to Thailand since he was signed then, right? No, I don't. You know, there's a possibility to get Rami out to Thailand in, in November. I got to try to put it together because we got to see what the world is like then. It's sort of hard to plan. I mean, we would have thought that that by November, everything would be back to normal as far as travel and business and fitness. But man, this, all this stuff keeps dragging out. Basically, the world's superpowers can drag it out as long as they want by just saying, oh, there's a new strain. Oh, now you need a new vaccine. Oh, there's a new strain. I mean, it can never end if they don't want it to. And I, I don't know how long they want it to go for. But as it gets closer, then, then yeah, hopefully we'll get Ramey here to Thailand and, and uh, put on a bodybuilding show with Ramey, um, uh, you know, featured. Not, not as a competitor, but just featured. And, uh, and because but because thailand thailand actually for how big it is and, and how many people there are it hasn't had a lot of attention by the top level bodybuilding community instead it's mostly like the lower level bodybuilders that come here earlier in their career to make their transformations that's very common people come here to transform because it's easier to get the chemistry uh everything's cheaper you can live the bodybuilding lifestyle really affordably so 
the the younger bodybuilders oftentimes come here, but the top level pros don't. I mean, even though Dennis James, who's also an enhanced athlete, uh, even though yeah. Dennis James lived here and trained here for a long time, you know, that was a great era. I wish, I wish that we still had Dennis James or someone like Dennis James here. That would be epic. Yeah. Like back in the day. Well, as soon as things open up, me and Robzilla definitely plan to visit Thailand, make some videos. I mean, every, everybody's ready. For, everybody's waiting for it. You know that. I mean, we got the best, not exactly your style, lady boys, but we have, my opinion, the best lady boys in the. I mean, you know, <laughs> speaking of which, I'm on Tinder here, and I don't know what happened last night, but all of a sudden, I mean, okay, th this is my Tinder gold or platinum, right? So I can see who liked mm -hmm. me. But this is, I actually, uh, last night, <laughs> I look on here, and all of a sudden, all of these are lady boys. Almost everything you see right here is a lady That looks boy. ooey and gooey to me. <laughs> Most people would never be able to tell. These are all lady boys. Yeah. Yeah, I could get into that. <laughs> There's so many. I am a man. So many because a of man. surgery. I am a man. I am a man. Yeah, it's socially acceptable. You can walk down the street holding the hand of a lady boy. No one would ever think that's weird at all. I mean, got good looking guys with hot lady boys walking around all over the place. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> and they had that they got the good thing that I was busted for too. That shouldn't be a problem. Well, you know, drug culture here is interesting because um there's some drugs that are really popular, but they're so illegal. They're so like, uh, you know, methamphetamine is very popular in you yeah. know, a lot of these Asian countries. And just as an example, because I think that's one of the more hardcore, more addictive things. Uh, but it's also extremely illegal. And they yeah. actually urine test people. So in some ways, you have more freedom in countries like this. And in other countries, you know, they can pull you over and say, hey, we're going to I mean, technically, they're supposed to bring you to the police station, but sometimes they just do it on the side of the road. They can urine test you for, for drugs and arrest you based on that. Not possession, just the fact that it's yeah. in your system. doesn't matter if it was an accident. Have you heard of cases of that, or is that just like threats and rumors? Oh, in your opinion. It definitely happens. Um, I'd say that it's oh. right now with the whole I don't think they need to pay attention to drugs right now now very much because yeah. they've got a bigger target that makes a lot more money and, and that they you know, cr created a perceived public risk of thing. All of the law enforcement is directed towards the same thing as the U.S., shutting down small yeah. business, basically, finding small business. That's where the money's at, right, uh, for violating rules, coerced and drugs. So that's where the attention's at right now. <laughs> If you were to look into your crystal ball, what would you see four years down the road worldwide as far as economics, human rights, things like that? Economy, def yeah. Yeah, so there's what's really happening and what really happens and versus the perception of what's happening. And again, like America, there's always been an illusion of freedom. There's a lot less freedom than people think. They, they think they're free because they feel like they can do what they want, but they don't realize that their mind is limited to this little box of things that they're told that they can do. And the, and the entire culture build around, built around it. Uh, so I, th I initially thought it was going to be a swing back the other way. They're going to, they're going to take away 30% of everybody's freedom across the board, get 30% control, diminish our spending power by 30%. I'm just coming up with a wild number. And then everybody's going to sort of get used to it, but, you know, like uh, there's going to be a lot of opposition. Then they're going to try to swing it the other way and, and make it look like they're creating more freedom. But in the background, all the laws have been laid. All the technology has been implemented. You have to just look at China and North Korea and how they control their population. And the Western world is, I think, the, the leaders and controllers of the Western world are jealous of North Korea. You know, we think North Korea is the, the ev most evil place on the planet. But I think the uh, elite people in control are like, wow, North Korea really nailed it. What can we learn from North Korea? And they're implementing pieces of this and pieces of, of China's uh, control. And, and also China's becoming more controlling. You know, China's really afraid about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really uh, the savior. If, mm -hmm. if everybody could get onto cryptocurrency and if cryptocurrency could remain less regulated, 
then if people have the freedom to use their money, that's their biggest freedom. Freedom over your body, you know, uh, physically, freedom over your mind, and freedom over your money. And that's what they're trying to take away. Freedom over your body, freedom over your mind, and freedom over your money. In that and, order. Okay. Yeah. So, so the problem is the technology is getting so advanced to be able to control humans, even if it was just to control us psychologically so that we never look outside the little box they want to keep us in. So the technology is so advanced. I don't think humans stand a chance. Humans don't even realize they're not even mindful. I mean, you walk around and people are like robots going through a program that they're basically given. They have no idea what they're doing or why. Yeah. So they don't even understand their reality. They understand what's told to them and, and they're re rewriting history. You know, we, the way we really learn is by looking at history and seeing history repeats itself and learning what the true intent of people is and the true intent of government. And when you start deleting history like they're doing or rewriting history, now people don't have any kind of a reference point to understand what's happening to them now and today. Yeah, that's rampant. So, so the summary is it's a losing, that. sorry, Lenny, the summary is it's a losing battle. I mean, we have to accept. This is what I come to the realization. We're not going to win the battle for freedom. It's people like you and me that uh, think outside the box that have to maneuver like a ninja, you know? We, we can do our stuff. We can, we can express our freedom. It's harder to do it publicly. It's harder to wake other people up outside the matrix. Uh, we can still yeah. live our own freedom lifestyle. We just have to do it more quiet. Most of what I do and, and most of what I, my friends do could never be publicized because it would expose loopholes that would then get plugged. You know? yeah. So I, there's a lot of things I, I don't want to say because if I do, it brings attention to it and it'll eliminate that option of our freedom. Uh, so I try to wake people up just the same way you do, like give them a different perspective. I mean, that's what you you and I both do. I think that's what we have in common. We give people an outside the box perspective to sort of question what they what they think and, and what they know. And then hopefully that leads them down a path to wake up and also become ninjas to navigate the, the system and, 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 and exercise their freedom to what capacity they can, given the technology limiting freedom. Yes, and I'm glad you're at the forefront with the supplementation and the protocols to give someone the intelligence to be able to make their own choice and to be a ninja and think. And I think that's why, you know, you're what the Nazis used to call the, the Superman. You have every quality available. And I think they were on the right track and they made some serious mistakes. But I think as the years go on, I could see the uh, benefits of the Third Reich on the world today. Mm. Not only with the space program. Yeah, I just realized you're in a unique position because, uh, you know, part of what you and I also have in common is sort of that shock factor. At, in the very yeah. beginning, people say, these guys are crazy. These guys are going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's what they, I'm sure they think like Lenny's going to die this year. Tony Hughes is going to die this year. We're, we're not dead yet. And we're, we're still living, living it up. Uh, but that shock factor. And then they, they want, then they want to watch and then they, then they learn from behind the scenes and, and almost putting ourselves forward sometimes in a negative light sort of prevents us from getting censored. Imagine if you went out there and you told the truth about living outside the matrix, like with none of the, the drama, with none of the, the train wreck that is, you know, the Delray misfits, right? Uh, you might get censored, right. but because it's because what you're doing is entertainment and because it, it sort of looks like a train wreck to the, to the mainstream, uh, I think it gets through. I, I think you have an opportunity. I mean, it's funny because you actually have an opportunity you actually probably do open up people's minds and make a, a significant beneficial difference beyond just the entertainment that I don't think a lot of people realize. Yes. And I like that ninja connotation. I'm going to start thinking of myself as a ninja, 300 pounds. Ripped. <laughs> ninja, yeah. and Tony, I wanted to ask you on the horizon for performance enhancement nutrition, what's in the forefront, not only with enhanced athlete, but basically with medical technologies, physiology, what is okay, going to be like, the... Yeah, I'll go. So I, real quick, I, I made this because I was thinking about Ninja, <laughs> right? I made Master yes. Hugh and the Freedom Ninja. <laughs> Try yeah. to make it fun because I, I don't know how else to tell my audience. Like you can't go and broadcast the amazing things that freedom brings you and how to get freedom 
you really have to be like stealth and maneuver quickly and adapt to, mm -hmm. you know, when one loophole gets plugged, you have to be able to adapt quickly and find another loophole. You can never rest because if yeah. you rest, you'll get sucked into the mainstream, turn into mm -hmm. a robot. Uh, so on the forefront of chemistry, I think we're barely scratching the surface with peptides. Mm -hmm. uh, in talk to, talking with Dr. Jaquish, the editor of the the body, not bodybuilding, it's, a, it's an actual medical journal on steroids and hormones. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, people don't, people don't talk about this, but there's so many peptides out there that doctors and scientists don't have a clue what they do. They don't even know. They've not been, they're in the body. Like they, 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 they know there's so many different, even bacteria strains. That's another one. So I think the future also is the probiotics. We don't even know a tiny little fraction of all the bacteria in our body and what it does and how it works with our body. And uh, the same thing with peptides. So there's, there's unlimited discoveries to make. I think the science is a lot further along than most people think. I mean, you just, just the, the basic surface stuff that you and I are aware of, like TB500 and BPC157 mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, let's say topical DMSO and uh, MK677. I mean, these things to us may be common knowledge, but I, I'm always surprised when I go to the mainstream and they know nothing about it and they still go to their doctor and ask their doctor what to take and it doesn't work and they're paying a bunch of money and it's just, a, and they just give up. They just start accepting mediocrity on every aspect of their level and living with yeah, isn't it. Isn't funny you get that from the teachers, the priests, the rabbis, the police, coaches, authority, mediocrity, fit in, cookie cutter, sheep, on and on. Well, actually, America, America started out as the other way. America was like the land of individuality. And I think it was a good experiment to see for the superpowers and the overlords, we'll say. I think it was a good experiment to see, okay, let's let's give them a little string. Let's instead of instead of building a prison and putting people in it, which is basically like China or North Korea, let's yeah. let's control their minds, make them build their own prison. And that's the experiment that is America. So people feel they have freedom and people do express individuality. And right now we have this huge, huge clash because now, because back then the technology wasn't so advanced. You had to work with people psychologically. You had to mind control them. In the future, the technology is going to be so advanced. You don't care. I mean, they're still going to be able to mind control, but they don't care so much about that. They're going to have uh, everybody's living space is going to be so wired up with, with technology that, the government or people who want to control us are going to be able to spy on us 24 seven. They're going to put a microchip in our brain. That's going to be able to tell what our thoughts are. We're going to have to get creative with the chemistry to figure out how to trick all these systems into thinking we're a robot while we're still uh -huh. asserting our freedom. So I think the future, the long-term future of chemistry is how do we trick the system into thinking that we're in the system and we're accepting the system, but we're really living outside the system. That's very interesting. That's very thinking outside the box, for sure. Be a, and a personal yeah. question: Did you get it yeah. and will you? I will not. Did you receive the code? No, I. You know, the strange thing is, I go on like I, I've been looking at Reddit more lately, and I'm surprised how many people on there are saying, "Well, the science says to get." <laughs> and I'm like, "What? <laughs> we have a totally different word for science." Uh, because mm -hmm. all the science that I see is against getting government actions. I, have to, I should choose my words more carefully. Uh, but the companies that profit from it, not just profit, this is what people don't understand too. Control and power is much more valuable than profit. The wealthiest people in the world, when we think wealth, I mean, see, we think wealth uh, billions of dollars. It, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm what matters is power and money can buy power, yeah. but power can always generate money. They just, they just don't need some of the world, world's most powerful people just don't need more money. They would rather yeah. have power. Yes. Uh, so, so all of these things give power over us and I just don't think we should give our power up and we have to have all of the facts to make an informed decision. But the problem is the facts are being limited we're, we only have access to the facts they want us to know. And this is the problem with technology is the internet is so highly censored. You know, there's all this information in favor of getting government mandated and
actions. And yet, if you actually talk to someone who knows deeply about the they will say they're not getting it themselves. And if you talk to someone who's collecting the incident reports on, on side effects and injuries, they'll say they're not getting it themselves because they're actually seeing uh, something like 10 times the amount of injury and accident reports coming in that are getting, that are getting reported. And this is all being censored and filtered. And, and of course you can go and you can brag about, Oh, I got the, I got the injection. I'm wearing a sticker. Oh, everybody should get the injection. Okay. That's going to get boosted and promoted and it's going to get a lot of views. But if you go out there and you say, Hey, I, I got injured and, and this happened, that happened, <laughs> censored, boom, pop up WHO. Uh, and, and eventually this is going to become like China where it's a merit system where, you know, you're going to get points and judged and, and you're just, if you go against the system, you're just not even going to be able to survive. And you've just basically given your entire your, your, your soul away. You have, you have, can't make any of your own independent decision-making. No, I will definitely not be getting the, unless I have to. And if I have to, I'll, I'll try to figure out how to counteract it. You know, but I'm, but this Tony, is what I mean. About what, is that, what, is, what is a half to to Tony huge? What's it going to take for the, you to take the vaccine? How far will um, you if, to fight back? If Thailand makes it mandatory, which I don't think they're going to make it mandatory because the government's basically saying as long as 80% of people get vaccinated, then that's herd immunity. The other 20% mm -hmm. doesn't matter, right? And there's plenty of sheep lining up to get it. So yeah. I think I think the 80% number is going to get hit and the, the rest of the 20% of us ninjas won't yeah. get it. But, so if, the, but if the government mandates for everybody to get it, <laughs> then I'll move. I'll move to a country that doesn't require it, and it's but not just get, because of that injection. Say, hey, you cannot travel unless you have the vaccine. That's what I'm right. concerned about. Right. Exactly. When I'm going to Canada, Thailand, wherever, uh, mm -hmm. and that concerns me. I don't want to be taken to a government quarantine. Things aren't going to go up very well. You know. You know. One other option that might solve this too is. I haven't researched the difference between all the vaccines very much. I mean, I have insider information about some of them, um, but from one person that researched them deeply, there there is one vaccine out there that has the potential not to be harmful. And if that one, so if there's five to choose from, let's say, and you can choose yes. the one that's not harmful, then that might solve it. Okay. But do you believe, like you said, with the brain control, there'll be some type of device or computer chip, as they say, in that brain to make it easy them for to control your brain? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think we'd be so naive to think not. The, re the reason why I know this is because it's like history repeating itself. If you get if if the technology is available, which it is, and uh, if there's people that are powerful enough to be able to control the world and they see the opportunity to use this to control people, of course they're going to use it. I mean, it's just human nature of these type of people that want to control the world. I mean, it, it would be so naive to think that, it, that it's not like that. Uh, and My theory is they're corroborating with alien technology and these aliens are telling these elites that are collaborating with them that they can have you live forever. And these elites are saying, well, we better control this to our liking because we're going to be around forever. Mm. You know, yeah, and, and maybe some of the people who, who died who are the most wealthy, powerful people in the world, maybe they didn't really die. You know, Maybe they are living forever and maybe they're in a different body. Maybe their consciousness was, was transferred. I mean, all this stuff sounds absolutely crazy conspiracy stuff, but... Historically, if you look back at some of the craziest conspiracy theories, they all ended up to be true. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually have a lot to say and a lot of feelings about that. It, you know, just just to scratch the surface is it, it sounds crazy, um, but I, I will I will tell listeners that I have thought about this stuff thoroughly. I think about this stuff a lot because I have to be one step ahead of the game in order to be a ninja to navigate my, my freedom. And it's, it's worked really well so far. I, I mean, I guess the proof is in the pudding about 
I mean, I guess the, the people watching wouldn't really know how far I got outside the matrix in some ways. And I, and I can't say because of the loopholes, but it's the type of thing that people like you and me, when we're together, we talk about and we help each other to get yeah. outside the matrix. Uh, and, and it makes a big difference to quality of life. Wow. Well, you, you telling me that there's so much many things going on. You really got me thinking now. Mm -hmm. where my yeah. priority is not to weigh 700 ripped anymore or do this, but just to be strong and healthy and intelligent and able to fight and negotiate and look towards the future. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. does bring me back closer to God. I mean, I'm not religious, but I think there's a creator and I think we were not built mentally to understand the whole process of the universe and creation and I think when we die, we all see that it's laid out to us. And it's just too complex for us to understand now as an immortal form, a mortal being. But I think we will one day when we're dead. You know, that's, that's what, that's the direction humanity should be going towards really understanding the science and spirituality and the connection between the two. And, you know, the technology is, I think, I think what happened with this whole uh, global situation is that the technology was also advancing very quickly in favor of freedom and self-discovery and autonomy and sovereignty and, and people's ability to look outside the box they're being put in. Uh, I think that technology was growing at a rate where it became very dangerous to those who want to try to control the world. For example, I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain chain technology was growing faster than they anticipated. And I think it posed a huge threat. And I think they had, and, and I think, you know, okay, there's a, are, there's people that think that Donald Trump is in on it. And there's people that think that Donald Trump was the last true freedom fighter. Uh, but I have to, I happen to think that he was a freedom fighter to the extent that he could be but that he still had limitations that if he crossed a certain line, then he would be assassinated type of thing. Yes. So I think he played within to give people as much freedom as they could get within certain boundaries. But I think it had such a huge impact. I mean, like for example, when he name dropped the cure for this, this virus on, on national television, I think that that had more of an impact and was more of a threat. And I think the people that wanted to control this situation realized how dangerous that was. And that's when they decided that they needed to start censoring people, even as powerful as the president. Now they always could have censored the president. They can always censor anybody they want, but they don't want to, they don't, there's a balance between how much control do they exert uh, and how much the public will uh, object to it. Yeah. So in, in this situation, they realized, ah, the overlords were realizing, ah, we are losing, we have the potential of losing control here. So backup plan, plan B. And they did all this crazy stuff. They let prisoners out of jail. They, they, they encouraged rioting in the streets. They just tried to break down everything that is America in a short period of time as a, almost an overreaction, but to prevent the path of freedom and human evolution from moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it happened so fast. I don't think it was planned to all happen this fast. So sinister. But yeah, sinister. That's a good word. Yes. Yeah. You got my mind racing now. Yeah, Any, so what uh, do we do about it? We got to live we got to figure out how to still live and be happy. So, you know what helps me is I'm in Thailand, everybody's Buddhist. Most people yes. are Buddhist. The Buddhist philosophy mm -hmm. of life, they're happy no matter what. No matter what's happening to them, put them in the worst possible situation. They're still happy because happiness really is a choice. And, uh, and you can be happy under any circumstances. You know, they, they realize a state of mind of living in the moment and maximizing yeah. the moment, not worrying about the past, not worrying about the future. I mean, the drawback of that is they probably don't worry about the future enough, which makes them very easy to control. Mm -hmm. Thai people and Asian people in general. I, I just got blasted for being racist by saying this, but I don't know how anybody could deny it. I mean, Asian people are, uh, to us Westerners, they, yeah. they look and seem like robots. And that's, I like that, you know, having a robot girlfriend is, is great, but man, <laughs> if they follow authority. I mean, if, if, if in these Asian countries, if the 
authority says, okay, today you have to wear the color, color blue because blue will protect you from a virus. Everybody would start wearing blue. They wouldn't even question it. So it can't tell me they're not more like robots. In America, people would be like, well, some people, half the people would be like, what are you talking about? What, what's the basis for that? What, <laughs> logically, how does that flow? How does that flow? I mean, we would question it, right? But that's why I think Western civilization or not Western civilization, but the people who were raised in our generation to embrace freedom and question authority to some extent are a threat to the rest of the world. And I think the world's superpowers want to destroy the good parts of Western civilization, but to use the bad parts, which is the yeah. mind control and manipulation. Do you fear China as a worldwide threat? There's someone to look at? Oh, absolutely. I think China, you know, I had a, I had a teacher who was actually fired. You know, my best teachers in school were fired for teaching things that were outside of the textbooks because the textbooks are all written by the same type of people that want to control everybody and, yeah. and manipulate history so that people don't know how to prevent it from happening again. Um, so, you know, he told me that we will see a war with China in our lifetime, that China has been preparing for a war for a hundred years and Americans don't even realize this, like they're completely unaware. So, so who's going to win the war? The, the civilization that's preparing for war for a hundred years or the civilization that's, you know, trying to figure out what new microwave to buy. <laughs> yeah, we're still talking about <laughs> black, white, and race relations. Yeah, we're yeah, in and trouble. It's not the Chinese people. The Chinese people are, uh, you know, they're not. It's the Chinese. It's the Chinese government, right? And and the people don't yeah. necessarily agree with the government. But then again, they're not allowed to say that because if they do, they'll, on the worst case scenario, they'll be assassinated. And on the best case scenario, they'll, they'll lose merit. They'll have their bank accounts frozen. Uh, their, their livelihood basically destroyed. Because in China, they've already implemented what they're trying to implement in America, which is a button that they can push to just eliminate someone completely. And, and, that, and America will have that soon. America will have that button. I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, I experienced it. And uh, I know other people that experienced it. Hey, Donald Trump will experience. I mean, that's just a button. Think about that. That's a button. And Trump was censored across every major platform and attacked from every possible angle. Just, just, boop, just one little button. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we need to wake up. Me too. I mean, thinking about party and you think thinking about survival. Yeah. I learned my lesson. Yeah. So thanks again, Tony. I appreciate that. Yeah. So what's, if you haven't already said it on another show, what's your current uh, chemistry uh, cycle? Well, as I'm training for an MMA fight with Mr. G in October, so I'm going to come in as big as I can and as in shape as I can cardiovascular wise. I'm very green as far as fighting, punching, but I truly believe if I'm in shape and I know the basics and he's under 200 pounds and I'm over three and in shape, I believe I'm going to be tough to deal with. So I'm taking, you know, tests right now, equipoise, DECA maybe some orals. And then eight weeks out of the fight, I plan on going and propionate master on things that are going to loosen that water from my lungs and my body. So I have more endurance and start taking a lot of G uh, GPC. Or is there any other SARM? What's the best SARM in your opinion for endurance? I like rad 140. Okay. And it doesn't add weight and it doesn't add water in, and when you're fighting actually body size matters. I'm not yeah. a fighting expert, but just the physics of it, the body size matters. So having size helps, uh, but uh, speed and, mm -hmm. you know, mind muscle connection, uh, rad yeah. 140 helps with that. And you might look at uh, some other chemistry that helps the, 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 the people strength athletes might use, uh, but you gotta be, you gotta focus on endurance. Uh, yeah. you, well, you gotta, you gotta not, gotta, gotta not get knocked out quickly. Uh, yeah. you know, so don't get knocked out. But then if you don't get, if it's not a knockout or a, a, something like that, then it comes down to endurance. Like if you get tired, that's when you're going to get beat up and you got to yeah. tire the other guy out. Right. So yeah, I got to take him down early. I know that I just got to take him out. Yeah. Possible. 